Hello, my name's Sheila. I've been a Christian for over 30 years and I've usually found that people in general do not really understand what a Christian is. They have various ideas which may be partly true but there are many misunderstandings and misconceptions about it. So, at the start of this series of talks I want to try to define what is at the core of being a Christian. When I tell people I'm a Christian, what do I mean? What it means to me may be very different from what it means to others. First, let's explore what others might think it means. For some people, it may mean being a good person, moral, honest, kind, unselfish, generous, or even perfect. That's a positive view. It's a lot to live up to though. For some, the word religion may pop into their mind. Now, people usually have negative ideas on religion or being religious. Wikipedia says, religion may be defined as a cultural system of designated behaviours and practices, worldviews, texts, sanctified places, prophecies, ethics or organisations that relates humanity to supernatural or spiritual elements. Well, I wouldn't take all that on board, but I do agree that religion attempts to relate humanity to supernatural or spiritual elements. Wikipedia also says there are an estimated 10,000 distinct religions worldwide but about 84% of the world's population is affiliated with one of the five largest religions namely Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism or forms of folk religion. So if Christianity is a religion I am put in the same category as Muslims, Buddhists, etc. So how do I differ from them? Is Christianity just another religion? It can refer to worship of a higher being or a set of beliefs by which a person lives. Religion can be a set of rules which one slavishly follows in order to please their God. So, people may view Christianity as a mixture of positive and negative. A lot depends on what other experience you may have had of Christians. I may be viewed as a moral person who is kind, loving, forgiving, reliable. Or I may be thought of as narrow, intolerant, even disapproving of others. I may be thought of as superior or proud better than others. These types of thoughts may spring to the mind of the hearer. If you've known a Christian who was kind and caring, then that will be the image that springs to mind. If you've known one who is strict, judgmental, separate, then that will be the image. Our nature and character will reflect the label we wear. So, Christians come in all shapes and sizes and it must be very confusing for people to understand what is a real Christian. What is the genuine article? Maybe it's rather like a dog. There are many different species, some we like, some we don't like. Different characters and natures, but they're all dogs. But what is it really that defines a Christian? What is the mark of a true Christian? Well, what defines a dog as being a dog and not a cat or some other animal? Well, I think the answer to that is it's in the genes. But how can a Christian have different genes from other people? Well, actually, they can. More about that in a moment. Certainly being a Christian should make us different in some way from other people. But really, most of us seem 
to be just the same. Hmm. That may be because the change that occurs in us begins on the inside and then has to eventually work its way out and affect our whole being, if we let it. So what do I mean by saying I am a Christian? What do I want to convey? Firstly, I'll tell you what I don't mean. It's not a system of behaviours, or a set of rules, or even the worship of a God, although some of those things may be apparent in my life. Remember, religion attempts to relate humanity to supernatural or spiritual elements. The overriding factor in being a Christian is having a changed life. You can't be born a Christian. You can't even be brought up or trained to be a Christian. Those who are are not genuine, I'm sorry to say. At some point in your life, you have to go through a change, which is actually a spiritual experience. You have to have a revelation of something you did not know or realise before. The Bible calls it being born again. So what does it mean to be born again? This is where the genes come in. We are naturally born with a set of genes which are determined and formed at conception. They produce our physical appearance and character. When we are born again, we receive a new spiritual gene. We human beings are made up of a body, a soul and a spirit. Before being born again, our spirit is dormant. When we are born again, our spirit is brought to life by God's Holy Spirit. We make a connection with God, the God who created us. Something new is conceived in our spirit that changes us. From that point on, we begin to grow in the knowledge and awareness of God. We can actually develop a relationship with God. Before this happened, we could not really connect with God, even though we may have tried. So how can we be born again? What is that revelation or experience that we must have? In order to be born again, we have to choose to believe and declare that Jesus was the Son of God, that he died on the cross to pay the price for our sin, and he rose again from the dead. The Bible puts it this way, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Being saved is another term for being born again. That is the starting point. It marks a change in your life. God literally comes into your life, into your being by the power of his Holy Spirit. His spirit connects with your human spirit and you can begin to hear him, to speak to him, to understand him. This is the beginning of your relationship with God, your creator. So Christianity is really all about having a relationship with God. It's about a supernatural spiritual change that takes place inside of you when you take that step of faith to believe in Jesus. Remember, religion attempts to relate humanity to supernatural or spiritual elements. <laughs> Christianity actually succeeds in that attempt. This is how Christianity is different from other religions. They do not have that born again experience. Well, that's all for today. Next time, we'll talk more about how we develop that relationship.